What was I saying about knitting? <laughs> Welcome to VibraTrek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to this creative space here in the North Woods of Maine. On this edition, I take you to a local crafters meetup. I take you along on a jaunt with my dog Ruby to enjoy the beautiful winter scenery and outdoors near my home. I catch up on a few projects and I also get a chance to complete a few, which is very invigorating. There is going to be a little knitting discussion. If you are a patron of this podcast or have donated through coffee, a deep heartfelt thank you. I am humbled and encouraged. If you have left comments or insight, thank you so much. I'm so glad you're here. Let's catch up. to your heartache if you want to open your door mm. i'm feeling kind of lost when your mind is hiding whatever that is choking your chest i can see it in your eyes that you're shaking cause you're holding it back mm. maybe you'll make up your episode, I talked about a few projects that were in progress that I wanted to dedicate some action steps to, and this homage to The Lost Words by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris was one of them. I brought this along with me, and I decided that I would take two of my completed squares and secure them to the overall piece with double herringbone stitch. I am using Morar Threads. This is a spun wool thread, which is a single, so it's very tender and fragile. And I've talked a little bit about using this thread before, and one of my tips is using a very large eyed needle to reduce the amount of friction the thread experiences going through different fabrics. I will have two more blocks to add to the overall piece, and then I'll be appliquing it down onto a felt backing, and I'm not yet decided if I will do more embroidery embellishment. Another project I wanted to organize was this embroidered wreath by Diana Vingard I've been working on. And I have a bunch of Whistlebear mohair yarns in my stash that I purchased for stitching. And I needed to match up the colors that I was using. And I also had some linen that I had purchased from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival that I was using for this project as well. And so I wanted to pull those together, cut some lengths, have them ready so that I could just dive in. And I also wanted to review the tutorial that's on her YouTube for how to make the pine cones. I mentioned this project in my last edition and here I am getting it all ready and actually doing some stitching on it, which was very satisfying. So it is out and in rotation and I am enjoying all of these different texture and color. Embroidery is such a great way to dabble in these mediums when you are working on a big knitting project and you want to satisfy some creative curiosity. The 
the last project and a completed project is the Endless Summer Tunic by A Verb for Keeping Warm. I am binding the edges of this knit with a Cretan stitch as inspired by the Alabama Channon School of Design. I am using button craft thread to do this in a neutral color and I simply just cut strips of the knit and I bind it onto the edging to give it a completed look. I have four more of these to do, I think it's four, and then I will have a whole new wardrobe for the summer. the benefits of staying in the southern part of the state with my parents is that I get to participate in activities that I wouldn't normally get to do such as going to a crafters meetup. This particular meetup took place at Poland Provisions on Route 26 in Poland, Maine and if you are local we would love to see you. I believe they are meeting every two weeks from 10 to 1. I took along mostly just knitting as well as my camera obviously. I was working away on different sleeves as you will see forthcoming, but there was a wide variety of crafts represented. Crochet, weaving, knitting, there was rug braiding. Here is my friend Jess who was the organizer of this meetup, so thank you so much. She has her own podcast which is the Wandering Stitcher podcast. and. One of the really fun things that she does is she takes you out on her hikes with her around the state. So you really get to see Maine um, in the wild. I very much enjoyed having a cappuccino and talking about not only the crafts, but sheep, dogs, farming, travels. It was wonderful to talk with other makers. Thank you so much, Jess. Thank you. 
Hello and welcome to the knitting portion of the episode. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are a patron of this podcast, a deep heartfelt thank you. If you have donated through Kofi, thank you so much. I am looking to expand the way that I enrich both of those platforms with content. And so stay tuned. I am thinking of adding a tier to Patreon and um, trying to find a way to offer up rewards to my coffee members currently I am sending links to the bonus blogs for the months that people donate uh, patreon operates under a per episode basis so it's three dollars per episode minimum you can pledge higher if you are so inclined uh, and you are only charged if I publish a podcast and you receive an extra bonus studio vlog every month so thank you so much for the financial contributions to this project I am deeply grateful. If you leave insights and comments, thank you so much. I read all of them. I don't always get time to respond the way I'd like, uh, but I do uh, appreciate the encouragement that comes my way through your kind, positive, generous comments. Insights, and I think that's all there is, right? Comments. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else on the platform that's described in another way. You may have some comments about what's coming up here on the Yell. I'm going to talk to you about my knitting. There isn't a ton. I have been um, stymied by weather to get home this weekend, and I was down at my parents last weekend as well for a family obligation. So I have been kind of piecemealing together different project progress that I can make, different different progress I can make on different projects. And um, which in some ways has been good because it's kind of forced me to focus on um, one in particular. But let's start with where my heart is at the moment. And that is with the yell. This is where I think you may have comments. <laughs> but I am knitting M Marie Wallen's The Yell and I am using the Moret from uh, Spindrift, Jameson's of Shetland for the main color and I finished the band. I did do it a bit longer than recommended in the book based on um, commentary from my friends who have knit this in the past and having trouble with that piece curling up under. So I wanted something a little bit more structured uh, that would hold the edge down on its own. And then I went to work with the uh, colors I had picked out and brought with me down south. These two in the beginning motif are Wren and Ruby, both Spindrift yarns. And I then decided that for the middle of the motif section, I was going to use the Eskit and the uh, Yellow Ochre. These two, which look beautiful together. Uh, but upon my knitting my first row uh, with them, they did not have enough value uh, differential to make them pop next to the ruby and the wren. So I knew that I wanted to substitute out the ochre. I wanna keep the esket uh, for a more orange toned or brown uh, kind of burnt coppery tone, similar to what's in my hat. Um, and so I have to wait to do that uh, so that, cause it's at my house. I didn't bring any other colors with me. Now, I did kind of swatch this in a kind of cowgirly kind of way. Um, so did, should I have known better? Should I have knit a whole swatch in all the colors that I was thinking of the entire motif of the bottom section of the project? Probably, uh, I didn't. I was feeling a little bit more cavalier about it, which is kind of my knitting style in general. And there are some beautiful uh, knitters out there um, who are very technical, very savvy, have lots of vocabulary around explaining what they're doing. Um, and they have podcasts and they share that knowledge uh, so generously, but that's not really <laughs> how I operate. I'm a little bit more like, I think that'll look good and I love those colors, let's try it. Um, but I'm also very comfortable ripping back, tearing out. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends who have been uh, really, uh, what's the word? Courageous is the first word that came to mind, but maybe innovative. You know, I think about my friend Corinne of the Woolly Thistle, when her lovage was too big, she cut it and knit another portion and grafted it together. And I have uh, my friend, Emily of Fibertown, who who's re-engineered the Samfri to knit top down and engineered the shoulders. And so uh, I kind of exist a little bit there, which is I know I can probably solve the problem, and if I can, I can rip it out. Uh, so that's probably why 
I did not put a bunch of um, effort into the initial experience <laughs> aside from uh, you know thinking about dreaming about the colors and putting together a palette that pleased my eye now I just need to rework them so that they work together and the right contrast I don't want a high contrast in the color work so on this particular piece I really wanted that red that really um, kind of muted brown to flow into this one so it has a little bit of a contrast but it's more like almost like the watercolor faded out um, that it's the lightest you could get with the water and that the ruby has the similar tones and feel of the other color that it's not such a stark shift um, in the color in the palette so that's where i'm at with my yell and uh as I said, this project is making my heart sing. I just love working with this yarn. It's an, it is one of my favorites. I think my first Patreon studio vlog was uh, like my top five. And I ended up like talking about my top seven yarns. This was in it. And um, yeah, I just really, I find this calling to me right now and I want to keep coming back to it. But luckily for Madison, <laughs> I wasn't able to, um, uh, work on it. So I got to work on her sweater. If you remember, I took my niece into a cabin uh, in November for a trip and she tried on my Koftebok and Frokengard and decided that she had outgrown her itch and she wanted another sweater. Now up to this point, Madison has not been that interested in wearing wool sweaters. She uh, had one I knit out of uh, Rama and the dog star for her in like pink and white. She really didn't appreciate that and wear it, which is fine. Um, but now she's decided that she does want to go into the realm of um, knitted garments. And so she wanted a yoke sweater with dog paws on it. And I picked up the Vilmex Barn by Lincoln Newman. Here it is. Now in hindsight, um, I kind of wish that I had taken uh, into account her commitment to the Solia yarn, which is from Hillesvog, that she wore at the cabin. She said it didn't bother her, she loved it, this is what she wanted. Um, and I, I probably should have knit this with Tinda, which is the kind of DK worsted weight of that line. I opted to go with knitting for Olive because they had a heavy merino worsted, uh, worsted spun as well. And I wanted this to be a nice entry point into the I've outgrown my itch phase. Um, and so I opted again, like I said, for the knitting for Olive. The nice thing about that yarn is A, the price point, um, B, the color palette and color options, and I think um, the variety of weights. So, I, I mean, it was really easy to ex mimic exactly what she wanted in her uh, sweater colors. So, I will say <laughs> that it is not a yarn that uh, felt very good to me on my hands. Um, it's a very um, matte yarn. Um, it has, because of its worsted, uh, you know, base, um, it has a lot of tensile strength. So I understand the design for wear, right? Um, when you have multiple plies, I think this is five, you have multiple plies, worsted spun, less surface area to pill. And so you get really good hard wearing yarn. Um, but going from the Shetland to this <laughs> was very challenging for me. Uh, in, in my senses. Um, I'm not necessarily drawn to this. It has, a, like I said, a matte feel. It's very dry. Um, and it doesn't have a, like any life to it. And I just, I just found personally for the, the calling of my, um, you know, where I am right now in my style, uh, yarn style, it just didn't match. And all the same, I got through it. I'm really pleased with the outcome. I finished the arm. I've opted to do a um, seed stitch on the cuffs and the hem. I just need to do one other. This is a mash of patterns from Dog Star, uh, Dog Star by Tin Can Knits, the actual pattern by Linka Newman, and my own um, kind of reverse engineering of what I want 
um, how, how I wanted to knit it. The original pattern is knit top up. I reversed it down. I refinagled the numbers because I wasn't knitting with the same weight yarn uh, or the same needle. And so I had to re kind of configure the gauge, etc. So I was able to pick up the chart and just kind of make that work. And that is, uh, that's one of my skill sets that I most treasure because it just, I don't get kind of st like stuck in a pattern. I can move, I can re-engineer, I can think about things in a different way. And so I'm really glad that I've been able to believe in myself and believe in my ability to kind of wing it <laughs> and have that confidence. Now, I've been out here for almost an hour and a half and it hasn't been windy at all. <laughs> so here's hoping that no more snow blows into my space. So that being said, uh, I have worked on my uh, Solalu sweater from the Knitted Kalevala. Um, but again, not being able to go home, my supplies have been limited. Uh, I need to transfer that to a smaller needle size. I'm working on the cuff of the first arm. Uh, so I set that aside, which like I said, benefits Madison. I am able to work ex exclusively on her sweater and get that finished, which is a good thing. Uh, while I was down, I also finished a pair of Speedy Selbu knits, which I started before um, December, and some Nash Island light leftover scrap yarn that I had for Madison. Those have since gone on to her and are being hopefully used today. We just got this snow and the kids had a delayed start. Um, so there have been some great finishing and some nice starts and some wrapping up moments, which have been really satisfying. Now, I am definitely looking forward, like I said, to getting home, expanding out in my studio space next weekend, playing around with that Shetland. Uh, I've been just <clears throat> dreaming a little bit of sweater knitting, like working with Let Lopi and Peace Fleece and cables and casting on a new drama. And um, so I have a real hankering uh, for kind of getting into some other yarns. Like I said, I'm not so much called by the actual sweater, but as so much more by the yarn in my hands. Uh, so we'll see what happens this weekend. Will she cast on another sweater? potentially. Um, what I have on, I do get asked this question um, and I don't often remember to talk about it, uh, but this is a self-drafted hat from my friend Nicole and uh, I think this is in a mashup of Spindrift and Jameson's with a beautiful chart work and colors, um, just a basic toque. So, um, and then this is the Trista by Jennifer Steingass in Tidal Yarns and obviously all her natural dyed colors. This is her heavier worsted weight yarn. Um, and it is a go-to. I kind of have two go-to sweaters and it's uh, really the Drema and this one. Oh, and I also like to wear, is it Golden Fern? Golden Feathers? I can't remember. I knit it in an Elsa Wool Cormo and a Green Mountain Spinnery Mountain Mohair. Chef's Kiss, amazing. Um, yeah, it's a really nice plush sweater. It's like a um, compression sweater because it's got so much spring to it. It tucks you right in and sensory, <sighs> sensory down. Um, such a weirdo sometimes. Anyway, um, I'm going to bid you a fond farewell. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for investing in this project. Uh, many fond wishes and blessings to you. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.